Recently, I was asked a question about the Eurekis. You may remember that the Eurekis consists of several elements. Now, the Eurekis is a generalized term oftentimes referring to the median and medial umbilical ligaments and the umbilical prevesical fascia in between. It goes from the umbilicus, comes around, helps form supporting structures to the apex as well as the lateral aspects of the bladder and attaches into the pelvic floor. The question was, aren't the two medial, those are the ones on the outside, aren't the two medial umbilical ligaments just a fold of peritoneum? That's what someone had been told. If you look, we'll see how the peritoneum comes over these structures. So what are we looking at here? So what I have is an image showing the pelvic organs of the female with the peritoneum laying over the top. So perhaps to help get your bearings a little bit more, let's put on a little bit of bony element. That'll make more sense. So from we have the bladder, here's the vaginal canal, and of course a vulva. So we're sitting inside here. So let's get rid of that so you all have your orientation now. And of course we can see the uterus with our tubes and ovaries. And remember that this would be the abdominal cavity, again peritoneum, because it's a peritoneum that separates the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. And this is our pelvic cavity minus the rectum. The rectum would be coming down through this area going from intra-pelvic, excuse me, intra-abdominal, sorry about that, into the pelvis. So to help get your bearing again, let's just go ahead and take off peritoneum. So now you can get a better feel for the bladder with the median umbilical ligament that was once called the, the this in and of itself was called the uracus embryologically. And these are of course our ureters going up to the kidneys. So let's put that back on. Okay. So again, pelvic cavity, abdominal cavity. So the thing to understand about the uracus and the medial, the two medial umbilical ligaments, is that this was all part of the fetal system. The main portion, the stalk in the middle, helps form the body or the corpus of the, the umbilicus, the umbilical cord, as it attaches into the placenta and the two lateral structures that are the medial umbilical ligaments are fetal arteries. There's also the falciform ligament and round ligament coming down from above. That was the fetal vein. So let's add in our arterial structures and maybe this will make a bit more sense. So we start with abdominal aorta and our two common iliacs. And then we see more bifurcations, more bifurcations, a little bit more, and there we go. So now, as I'm adding in arteries, what should appear but part of the uracus in the two medial umbilical ligaments? Well, that may not make a lot of sense since I, it's going from the umbilicus into the pelvis. Well, it was part of the fetal circulation system. So as you follow this down, you will see that it attaches into the arterial system within the pelvis. Why does this matter? Because these structures are innervated the same way as any other artery in the body, which is of course sympathetically mediated. And if something could perhaps be causing upregulation of the tissue in this region or of this tissue, then it could be having an effect on the sympathetics within the region. So what could possibly be going on? Well, anything affecting the umbilicus or perhaps the abdominal wall. 
So let's add in some layers of muscle and take a look at where this falls. Okay, so, so as an iliacus quadratus lumborum, no big effect there, getting into the abdominal wall, the lateral aspect, but now when we put in the rectus, we'll see that this is covered up. If we look from behind, and I remove that connective tissue layer again, then you'll appreciate that the median and medial umbilical ligaments and the fascia in between all is on the dorsal aspect of the rectus abdominis. So when we're dealing with anything that could be affecting the rectus, that could perhaps cause an issue here. And the first thing that comes to most people's mind would be the typical fan and seal incision. Well, when that's done, they cut through the skin down below, but up top, the rectus is separated. The area that I see issues are surgeries around the umbilicus and anything affecting the entire abdominal wall, such as abdominal plasties. I have certainly seen plenty of overzealous surgeons that have caused a tremendous amount of tension within the abdominal area from a very aggressive tummy tuck, and consequently seen those patients with vulvar pain and pelvic floor issues. Is the urachus problematic and causing problems? Perhaps, can't say for sure, but I do think it's important that we consider these structures and consider how they come in and attach. Let's get rid of some of these muscle layers. And attach into the bladder. And consequently, that follows on down into the urethra. So what we don't see in this image is how the urachus blends into the remainder of the endopelvic fascia as well as the obturator internus. So I hope that that gives you some good understanding of how these structures might play a role in what's happening within our patients and realize that they need to be looked at and considered as a source of nociceptive input. And when one considers the fact that they indeed are innervated sympathetically with the remainder of the arterial system.